Today we'll talk about uh, an important topic, which is penetrating eye trauma in children. I am sure those who rotated in the emergency room has seen many children come with trauma. So it is estimated that more than 2 million eye injuries occur in the United States every year with more than 40,000 resulting in some degree of permanent visual loss. Trauma to the eye usually represent around 30% of all the emergency department visits in the United States. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have our national data, but we are looking forward to have our uh, national registry and national data for trauma. One third of all cases of childhood blindness happen from ocular trauma. <clears throat> Again, I will share with you the information in the United States, which is, uh, which is what we have. It, is, it has been estimated that 840,000 ocular injuries occur within the pediatric population each year, which is a really high number. Eye injuries are the leading cause of monocular visual disability and monocular blindness in the childhood time. Many large studies investigating the epidemiology of trauma in children have been published. The rate is, has been estimated to be 29.1 per 100,000 every year. Many studies, one of them is done by Klopfer et al, reported an average annual uh, hospitalization rate of children with a diagnosis of ocular trauma to be 15 to 15.8 per 100,000 in the United States. So the rate is usually around 30%, 29 to 30% per every 100,000 uh, uh, population of all ages with ocular trauma. So it's really high number, about Third, about third of 100%, 100,000 will have ocular trauma. Of all the penetrating eye injuries, 27 to around 50% affecting children. So if you can see this figure, it's around half of the ocular trauma happened to children, which is really significant as well. Thus, children represent a disproportionately large percentage of total ocular trauma. Regarding the gender, because of the occupational and recreational prevalence, most globe rupture injuries happen in men. As you know, the, most of the outdoor activities and uh, those who take challenges more happen in the male side. So 78% are men. And this high percentage is more likely to have penetrating eye injuries. It's the same thing in children. Boys are more prone to eye injuries more than the girls. The complex open uh, uh, globe injuries will lead to vitreous hemorrhage and retinal detachment. That's why <coughs> these complications have to be looked at, and usually those complications will cause amblyopia if not treated properly. I don't know whether the uh, uh, image is here clear in the, uh, for you. On this side. This side. Yes, it's clear, Dr. Abdullah. Okay. Furthermore, the children usually develop more extensive post-operative inflammation and scarring and proprietary retinal retinopathy than adults, because you know the inflammatory response in children is much higher than adults. That's why they are prone to have vitreo retinopathy more than the adults. We did one study and our objective of this study to determine the clinical and demographical characteristic 
of penetrating eye injuries happened in childhood. We reviewed the medical records of 71 patients uh, and usually are under uh, 15 years of age who underwent any operation due to penetrating eye injuries. And we rest, uh, retrospectively evaluated the medical records for the age six year of trauma, the site of injury, duration from trauma to application, cause of the injury, uh, penetrating materials, localization of the trauma and ophthalmological findings, presence of infection of the first and last visual acuities and numbers of operations. All these data were analyzed. Our results showed that total number of 71 cases of penetrating ocular injury in the children were included in our study. Males, 55% more than females, girls, uh, sorry, boys more than girls, <clears throat> and 58% of them were Saudi nationality. Uh, uh, about 42 there were non-Saudi. The mean age was 7.5 years. And of course, our maximum age was 15 years. We found the most common object of trauma was the knife, which is something at home. So we felt that trauma actually is, is more happens indoor, not outdoor as somebody might uh, think. So we should look again to the inside of the homes. They are, is the source of trauma for children. About 17 cases, maybe a quarter of the, the, uh, uh, our population, they get this knife injury. 15%, uh, they get pen. And 13% other objects, especially the clothes hanger. Maybe you see this, this is a very dangerous tool at home. So knife, glasses, and cloth hangers were the most common cause of penetrating eye injury in children inside the homes. The most common type of penetrating ocular injury found in our cases was corneal laceration. About 87%, which is two thirds or more even, it was pure corneal laceration. 40 cases had, in addition to the corneal laceration, iris prolapse. And 20 cases, this corneal laceration were associated with scleral laceration. <clears throat> the most common object trauma, as I mentioned, was the knife, if you see this table about 25%, glasses comes next, pen comes next to the glasses, and miscellaneous like the toy, clothes hanger, and edge of a ruler, or uh, 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 this kind of sharp thing. So most problem for children when they have trauma inside the home. So probably this is a very strong message that has to be taken to the community and to the population that children at home, they face really real danger by being exposed to this unprotected material uh, like knife, glasses, pen, or this uh, hang, uh, clothes hanger. All these things have to be kept away from children in order to protect our children from penetrating eye trauma. The most common modality of Sorry, the most common <clears throat> modality of investigation in the emergency room used was the B-scan, which is used more than 22 uh, cases. Prophylactic intravitreous antibiotic was used before the primary repair for all cases. Our hospitalization period ranged from one day up to 28 days, with the average of around six days. The follow-up period ranged from two weeks to 78 months with the mean of 23 months as a follow-up time. 
So this table will summarize the type of penetrating injury we saw, corneal laceration, constituted more than 87%, iris prolapse, we, we saw iris prolapse more than half of our population, Scleral, scleral injury, it was 4%. It was very minimal. It was only three patients. Regarding the lens injury, around half of our, of our uh, study population, they got lens injury. Retinal injury, around 7%, and vitreous hemorrhage as well. Conjunctival laceration was seen in less than 6%. Lid injury was seen in 4% and foreign body was noticed in only 4% of our study group. <clears throat> the most common compl complication during the follow-up was corneal scar, of course, as you know, which is found in 77.5%. Retinal detachment was a complication in nine cases. Five of them occurred at the time of injury and Four cases happened later on. This probably will give us the message that we have to follow up the children with the trauma. If they don't show written detachment at this presentation, they probably would show the written detachment at later on, even at a later stage, like three or four years. So it is important to follow these children up looking for written detachment even after so many years after the primary injury. Fortunately, endophthalmitis only occurred uh, in one case. And this case was studied uh, uh, in depth and found to have a delayed presentation. The child presented to us 15 days after the trauma. That's why he or she developed the endophthalmitis. The frequency of complication, probably it's mentioned already, corneal scar, 73%, which is the highest complication occurred in the long-term complication of trauma. Lens involvement, half retinal detachment, around nine cases, which is 12%. Unfortunately, we uh, uh, did evisceration for one patient, and probably this is the endophthalmitis case, which presented very late. Glaucoma was seen only in one patient. Probably this is really good news as well because we didn't see many children with a glaucoma, although we expected glaucoma to happen in children with penetrating eye injuries or with blunt trauma as well. And this complication has to be seen as well, even for long-term complication. Visual equity was measured for each patient in the last visit during the time of the follow-up. Most of our patients among the good visual outcome group, their visual uh, acuity was ranging between 2020 and 2040. <clears throat> Three patients only had fine, final visual acuity of no light perception as complications of retinal detachment, endophthalmitis, and of course, evisceration. This table will demonstrate to you the visual acuity outcome. Around half of uh, our patients, they uh, uh, entertain a good visual acuity ranging from 2020 to 2040. 71%, which is the, the, uh, another percentage, they got 2050 to 2160. And of course, the majority of them, they had 2200 a bit and to light perception. No light perception occurred only in three uh, patients. <coughs> this uh, uh, paragraph will link the visual acuity and the age as an outcome. Of course, uh, you know that children, when they get trauma in the amblyopic age, visual acuity will be affected dramatically. If they get it more, uh, after the amblyopic age, the 
the visual acuity will be affected uh, less. So we found a link between the visual acuity and the age. It was better with all children uh, passing the ambulibic age, of course, and there was no relationship between the final visual acuity and the sex of the patient. You see this red column here, the highest percentage for children who are more than five years of age. The next one is 10 to 15, and the least visual, good visual acuity found in children with, uh, who were less than five years of age. Is the sound clear, uh, Dr. Ismail? Yes, Dr. Abdullah, clear. Okay. <clears throat> so the best visual outcome was associated with, regarding the site of injury, we found the best visual acuity was associated with limb. So out of all seven cases, the visual acuity was equal or better than 2100, except one case who got endophthalmitis. So limb uh, uh, injury site, is, uh, uh, was found to be a state of good visual acuity in our sample. There was no significant difference in the final visual outcome between patient with corneal laceration alone or patient with corneal scleral laceration. So probably this is another good news. There was no much difference if the child is having pure corneal or corneal uh, laceration uh, wound. The size of the corneal laceration was significantly correlated with the final visual outcome. So the more corneal laceration, the more poor or the poorer visual outcome. In our study, the mean corneal laceration size was 4.9 millimeter. The time passed before attempting the primary repair was ranging from half an hour to 48 hours in most of our cases. Four cases had their primary repair done after three, four, five, and 15 days, whose visual acuity were respectively as 2025, 20, counting finger, 2020, 20, and no light perception. So if you look carefully, two, two three, four, five days, the outcome was reasonable. But if you look to 15 days, this patient had no light perception due to the, to the uh, endophthalmitis complication. Regarding the traumatic cataract, in our study, almost half of our patients, they get lens injury and lens involvement. Uh, 32 had traumatic cataract formation. 28 of them had lens aspiration. The lens aspiration was performed at the time of the primary repair in 11 eyes, about a third of the lens injury. We did the primary implantation in one case. At the time of the injury, we did one case. Two patients underwent secondary uh, uh, implantation and uh, uh, eight remained. Of course, the majority of our patients, 61% underwent secondary lens aspiration and uh, uh, secondary eye oil implantation. <coughs> this is regarding the traumatic cataract and visual uh, acuity outcome. About one third, they get 2040 or better. The other third, 2160 or better, and 40. 44% uh, their vision was 2200 to light perception, and we get two patients who get no light perception. Regarding the time of the, of the lens aspiration, whether we do it at the primary repair or should we do it as a secondary procedure, in our study, we did not find any significant correlation between the time of the lens of uh, lens aspiration and the visual outcome. So in our study, if you do the primary uh, lens aspiration 
at the time of the primary repair, or if you delay the lens aspiration, secondary after the healing of the corneal skull and all these things, and you do the cataract, the visual outcome regarding this two, comparing these two procedures regarding the time of intervention was not significant. There was no difference in the visual outcome. The hospitalization and follow-up period was significantly related to the visual outcome, of course. The more hospitalization, the less visual outcome, and I'm, I'm sure this can be related to the more complication, more inflammation, and the need of more stay at the hospital. So the ocular penetrating trauma injury in children is a leading cause for non-congenital poor vision because if it is a great potential prevention, it is considered as an important public health issue. The current study, which we did, believed to be the first one to report penetrating eye injuries among children in our Saudi population. 71 cases were collected, as I mentioned, and males were more predominant than females. And this is believed to be because of the natural characteristic of males that predisposed them more to different types of trauma. Predominant age group was among children between the five and 10 years. And of course, this is the age where children try to explore things, try to find, to, to identify things at home. And unfortunately, if they were not unsupervised, probably this uh, exploration will lead them to hard objects and dangerous objects in kitchen like knives, which will cause the trauma. Most common object trauma, uh, as we mentioned, knife, which is about 70% of our children. And this was correlated with other studies as well. The mechanism of injury by the knife is not a matter of violence, rather than innocent holding of a sharp object left within the reach of the children. This demonstrates a great need to emphasize on the importance of parents' supervision to prevent such accidents. Home safety should be considered by parents for their children as well as instructing all their children about the, ch uh, the danger of sharp objects in general. So probably it is one of our job as ophthalmologists to educate the population that the dangers really rely on their homes, not outside for penetrating eye injury in children. Pen, pencil is considered as a main causative object in ocular trauma, especially among the school age group. It accounts for 13% of our cases. And it's found to be a, a significant percentage in other studies as well, around our studies, 12% as well. This will raise the issue of children's safety in schools as well, and the role of teachers' uh, instructions to prevent such injuries. So it is something like education. We need to educate our, our uh, society. We have a very good experience in education, our society regarding the fire cracks, you remember? We used to see many fire cracks, trauma in our emergency room, especially in Eid, Qatar, and Eid al-Abha. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful to all ophthalmologists who went to the social media, to hospitals who went to the social media and made mass awareness about fire cracks and the, the, uh, the injury which they are causing to children. Uh, uh, thankful for the government uh, uh, bodies who, who took the message and they started to work on the issue of bringing the fire cracks to the markets and prevent selling them to children, prevent selling them in the streets. Last two years, we saw a dramatic decrease in the fire cracks injuries. And uh, probably last year, we saw very few cases. Compared to the previous years where we, where we saw really uh, big uh, numbers and devastating injuries to the eyes from fire cracks. And I, 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 it was really a, a, a very successful campaign, which included the social media, especially Twitter. So I encourage you and ophthalmologists and residents to carry out another uh, uh, education to the community regarding the 
hazards of the sharp objects at home and how do you prevent them and how do you prevent the complication and the severe visible loss occurring from the injury of these sharp objects. <laughs> the present study showed that the cornea was the most common injury occurred uh, in the penetrating uh, injuries and this is compatible with many findings and many different studies. <clears throat> Traumatic corneal laceration are frequently associated with lens damage. Uh, and the incidence varies between 27% to 65% in different studies. In our study, it was around 50%. As I mentioned this before, so the cataract extraction at the same time of primary repair is indicated if there is a severe lens damage that may lead to significant inflammation or lens-induced glaucoma. In the less severe cases, or if the lens capsule is intact, probably the uh, lens aspiration and ionic plantation better to be performed later through uh, 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 a second surgery uh, to be recommended by many, many authorities. Although it, is remain, it remains as a controversial issue, and our study proved that there was no significant difference in the visual outcome, whether you carry out in the uh, primary repair at the time of primary repair as a secondary procedure. When we compare the uh, visual outcome for those who underwent cataract extraction at the time of the primary repair with others underwent as a secondary procedure, as I mentioned, we found no significant correlation between the time of lensectomy or lens aspiration and the visual outcome. The majority of our lens injury cases, 47%, were found to have poor vis uh, final vision, 2200 to uh, no light perception. Only nine eyes, about 25%, achieved final fidelity outcome of 2040 or better, which is a smaller percentage compared to uh, 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 another studies where they describe more visual outcome or better visual outcome. Uh, I don't, uh, uh, I can correlate the, the, uh, the visual outcome with lens uh, injury. So if there is lens injury, probably it will be associated with poor outcome of the visual acuity. In the other studies, the, their visual outcome was 67% of them, they achieved 2040 uh, of visual acuity or better. In another study, which carried out by Chong and Lei in 2005, around 56% of their children, their population were 70 eyes, their samples, they got 2040 visual outcome or better. In our study, we cannot ignore the fact that nine of our lens damage cases were having associated major complications. Eight cases had retinal detachment, and one case had vitreous hemorrhage which definitely contributed significantly to the poor final visual outcome. Our finding was compatible with Wang et al. study, which concluded that written detachment caused by open globe injuries in the pediatric population is associated with unsatisfied visual outcomes. And the other indicator of Poor visual outcome found in our study was the younger age group. The visual acuity was better with the older children, more than six years. So we know this is correlated to the passing the ambulatory age group. This finding was com com comparable to another study who found that patient age as one of the main determining factors in the outcome of open globe injuries in children as general. And uh, as I mentioned before, and we did not find any uh, relationship between the visual, uh, visual acuity outcome 
and the six of the children. Uh, although some studies found the younger age group and male six associated with better visual prognosis. So this is in contrast to our study. It's totally opposite to our finding. I was in the last slide, I was saying that the, the best visual outcome in our study was associated with limbal injury. Uh, and this is attributed to the histological features of a limbus that is highly vascular and are for the stem cells of the cornea. And uh, in another study, they found that the poor visual outcome was uh, associated with large corneal laceration, mixed corneal scale laceration, involvement of the lens and posterior pole. I think we covered this already. So this is conclude my uh, talk today. This study of penetrating angels among uh, our children emphasize the importance of taking preventive measures to prevent such injuries that usually carry unsatisfactory prognosis and subsequent long-term visual impairment, especially for young children. This is the last slide. I would like to thank everybody who attend the talk today. And the floor for you, Dr. Smaid. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, if anyone have a question or comment, um, he can uh, uh, raise his hand or he can text it as a message. Or even he can uh, directly interfere if you want to add or uh, have a question directly to Dr. Abdullah. Dr. Abdullah, can I um, have a notice? Um, you mentioned that um, the time of uh, intervention, mm -hmm. the time between um, presentation to um, emergency and intervention. Yeah. Uh, I think this was um, a factor of um, uh, result, uh, if the patient will have a good result or not. Yes. Uh, did, it, did you find uh, if the patient um, in your review, uh, does it make a difference if the um, uh, level of the center, level of training, uh, does it make a difference in the outcome? Actually, uh, when we, thank you for the question, Dr. Ismail. Actually, when we, uh, when we reviewed our uh, uh, study group, of course, all of them are done in King Abdelaziz University Hospital. Uh, we couldn't compare the, the other uh, centers or the level of the centers, but probably this is a good uh, uh, thought to, to make a national study to compare the visual outcome and the management of penetrating eye children in many, many centers. But, all our uh, uh, group came from one center. That's why we didn't we didn't find any difference. You mean those who are referring to us, or uh, yes, uh, or uh, the, the the level of the uh, uh, treating physician, uh, a resident who did treat it in our hospital or a, a consultant, does it make a difference in the outcome? Uh, we did not look specifically uh, who was the primary surgeon. But as you know, our uh, rule in King Abdullah University Hospital, all the uh, penetrating eye injuries are attended by a consultant. Uh, so uh, whether the consultant uh, will do the surgery himself or give it to a, a, a training surgeon, we didn't uh, look at specifically at this, but you know from the procedure, uh, at least it is supervised and the consultant is interfered whenever he feels that uh, he needs to interfere. So uh, I don't think there was uh, any uh, jeopardized level of service or uh, of uh, anything regarding the, the operation or the management. So I don't think it play a big role, but you are right. Unless we study it, we can't really answer it unless we look specifically for this uh, uh, issue. I, 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 probably when we look at it, we might get surprising results. Yes, I, I, probably, yes. Uh, anyone uh, had a comment or had a question to Dr. Atabi?
I think, uh, Dr. Abdullah, uh, there is no um, comments and uh, no um, uh, no uh, questions. So uh, thank you, Dr. Abdullah, for uh, the nice presentation. And uh, we will have a break now. Then uh, we will reconvene for the quiz for the residents.